here. As always, it's such a blessing and such an honor to be here. Uh, my name is Riza Mendez, if you don't know me. I'm the interim pastor at our church. And um, we're in our fifth week of our Soul Care series. And um, it's been an absolutely a fantastic journey, some really great messages. And um, yeah, today is going to be a, a good one, I think. God's been speaking to me and, and, and um, gave me a good message. So I'm hoping that as it's been a blessing to me, it'll be a blessing to you too. Um, please stand with me as I pray and um, just prepare our minds and hearts um, as we worship our King, because He deserves it all. Let's stand. Father God, another day that you've blessed us with. What a joy and honor it is to know that we serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That Lord God, we can call you our friend, our Father, just anything that we need. You are there for us. Lord God, I thank you for this time now that as we worship you, Lord God, may the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, Lord. And I pray, Father God, for each person here. Bless them, Lord. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, Glenn. Come all you weary. Come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find His mercy. Come to the table, He will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in Him will live forever Bring all your failures, bring your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. With an open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Defeated now, it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him. From the wonders of His love Praise God, praise God From whom all blessings flow Praise Him, praise Him For the wonders of His love His amazing love For God so loved world that he gave us his one and only son to save for god so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of fail forever defeated now it is Walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. I 
I searched the world It couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough You came along Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness. My failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all. And you still call me friend. It's the God of a mountain. It's the God of a valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn grace into goddess. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Yes, Lord God. I pray as we sing those words, that Lord God, it won't just be words that we sing out, but Lord God, that you would see our hearts. That Lord God, there is definitely nothing better than you. Nothing that satisfies the way you do. Nothing that loves the way you do. Nothing that restores the way you do. And so, Father God, as we sing those words, I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would come and just be with us. Presence of the Holy God.
be with us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, morning again, church. You're more than welcome to have a seat, or you're welcome to stand on your chair, or jump around, uh, run around if you want to. <laughs> Glenn, did you say your grandfather ran around? Or? Oh, yeah, he's running all the time. Oh, running around. Awesome. Um, just a couple of announcements um, this morning. Our camp registrations um, are looking good. I think we're closer to 30 people now, which is good. Um, you're more than welcome to come for the day as well. So we have the Saturday, and we've got a full program on the Saturday. And the Sunday, we'll have a really awesome baptism as well on the Sunday, which will be fantastic as we celebrate the resurrected Jesus. We'll be celebrating a baptism as well. So that'll be really good. Um, our tithes and offerings, we've got the fantastic trendy box as always at the back there. So um, if you're feeling led to um, uh, give us an offering in, in terms of cash, then please um, just top it in the box. If not, our banking details are on our website and in our email newsletter. I've got the fantastic Miss Jeannie, Mrs. Jeannie, that just wanted a, a few words um, with us today. She's been doing a phenomenal job these last few months. And so, Jeannie, I just want to say thank you in front of everyone for the amazing effort and um, the passion that you have put into all these fantastic um, activities for our kids. So, um, thank you so much, Jeannie. Thank you, and I couldn't do it without children, so would you like to come up, Archie and Georgia, and Joel, there's even um, a little activity that you've done, if you'd like to come up, don't be shy. <laughs> uh, this has been my baby for this, um, this semester, I've uh, designed a... Um, program for term one now young children who are here for the play what did we celebrate Jesus birth yes sorry I need a microphone but you can shout that out and so we've been traveling um, through which gospel this month Mark yes we know that and what did we start with Yeah, he was baptised. And can you see those fluffy clouds? Does someone want to take that? The fluffy clouds and the rays coming down from heaven and the, the um, little dove that's flying away there. So that was an exciting little thing. And we were looking at how can we walk in Jesus' shoes. So we've got different little things there um, that m might help us follow in Jesus' ways. Isn't that right, Georgia? Yes. So things like um, reading the Bible, or if you can't read, um, help uh, asking mum or dad to um, read to you. And we were also looking at all these wonderful fish, if you'd like to hold some of these fish, and I think this one's yours, <laughs> his, his tail's a little bit skew with. But um, what did Jesus say? You can become fishers, men or women or people. Yes. And on the back, if you turn yours around, we've got somebody with a name on it, hopefully, um, who they would like to talk to about Jesus, how wonderful Jesus is, and how we can be fishers of people. Um, of course, uh, the children didn't get away with my passion for ancient languages. Uh, sorry, kids. And uh, we've got uh, some uh, amen. So do you remember when you read the word truly, Jesus is saying, I need your attention, guys. Listen to me. Amen. Uh, and there was also um, how to spell Jesus in ancient Greek, which is uh, without a J. It's a little bit interesting. All right. Then we followed on and we had the calling of... Geordie, I think this is yours, don't you? The calling of Levi. And Jesus said, 
Levi, come and follow me. And Levi, what did he do? Yes. So that's a word search. So we had all these little uh, Damaris, the numbers on the back, and they matched up with letters on the front. All right. Now, I'm not sure that you were here uh, for this, Archie, but if you would like to hold that. And we are looking at Bezelebal. Bezelebal is probably not pronounced that way. That sounds better. Thank you. <laughs> um, so show that. What happens when the kingdom is divided on the front? Everyone's grumpy. So just close it up first. Yeah, everyone's grumpy. And we've got a break in our rainbow. And that's what happens when people are not working together. The community falls apart. Now we can open it up and we've got this glorious rainbow. And look at that um, sun with a top hat on there. So uh, things are much better when we can work together. Josh, I think you were uh, talking about, I'll take these, talking about being on um, a soccer team and what happens when we've got two balls and go in different directions. They'll get angry and it doesn't work. No team, well that team doesn't win, does it? <laughs> no. All right, so what else have we got? We were talking about the sowing the seeds that's over there thank you for catching that we've got a little mobile there we've got the parable on one side and on the other side what it means and that uh, story has actually flowed into other uh, stories that we've been learning about in particular the pharisees we asked them the children last week what sort of soil do you think the pharisees were being grown in they had no faith in Jesus, did they? You came to answer that? On par? Yeah. I think they were in any soil except for the good soil, weren't they? Yeah. All right. Then we were talking about who'd like a fan? Joel, would you like this fan, darling? Yeah. That's 12 disciples there. Um, and it's a way of learning what the disciples' names were. Now, who did um, Jesus call? Levi. Levi's not in there. And I'm thinking that his name was changed to Matthew because he was a tax collector. So um, we can fan those out. And um, the, Bible, the disciples were sent out two by two. All right. What else? Now, yeah. Jesus, we learnt, was rejected by his community. And because they all they saw was he was a carpenter. So how could he be our Messiah? And look at all these wonderful bits of stool. They're all set, guys. You can uh, finish making them today with a blue tack into stools. Yay. Yes, that was a little yay. Okay, and then um, we were also talking about compassion and how compassionate Jesus um, was. When he was tired, uh, he still fed 5,000 people. Okay, who wants to put on a dinner party for 5,000 people? <laughs> Even 12 would be too much, uh, but he does. And um, we created a flower there about how we can be compassionate. Do you want to read one of the um, things? Open a door for someone. Open a door for someone. Thank you, Jordan. All right. Um, then, oh, this is something else that you guys were doing. I'll take that, Georgia. So you get a hand. We were weaving a basket of fish and loaves and um, yeah that, that, that's all Jesus needed to feed 5,000 pe people isn't that right yes so we've got um, those little baskets most of these 
I've only got a few examples from children. Most of them have made it um, home uh, with everybody. And this is um, something that we're going to do today, uh, which is uh, we're talking about the rich young ruler and the uh, camel uh, going through a, the eye of a, a needle. So hence the uh, weaving there. And we were just wondering how we could give away things that we might really, really love to somebody who um, doesn't have it. So that's the, um, an idea of the lesson today. Now, an interesting fact, um, this beautiful wool I found in uh, a wool shop in Kelmscott that is um, a teddy bear hospital and orphanage. So if you don't know about this um, wool shop, it's awesome. Take your wallet, credit card. <laughs> and when you go through the door, it's not an uh -uh sound, it's a bird's tweeting. So it's really sweet. Do you want to know about that? All right. Um, thank you, young people. I'm really looking forward to today's lesson. Yeah. Um, and a few of my own thank yous too. Thank you, Joel. That's lovely. Um, yeah, I, uh, the children, I couldn't do it without the children, can't, certainly can't do it without leaders. So Pam and Nikki, Susie, long-term leaders. Um, we've had long-term leaders, um, Kylie and Cindy and uh, Sabrina, um, who needed to step down while they've got all their um, beautiful children to raise. Um, some newer leaders, we've got Hayden and Karen on board. Our new, oh, and Michael down the back. So thank you guys. And our brand new leader is Georgia. So thank you very much um, for leading. And I think, uh, I'm just hoping I haven't missed anybody's names. There we go. If you've got any questions, happy to uh, respond. If you wanted to have a look at... Um, the leaders' manuals. We've got a junior one and a, and a senior one. You can have a look at those later on. Thanks. So I'll give away old Bill Arden. Well done, Genia. Th those looks awesome. I think um, fantastic. Uh, can we give Genia a round of applause? I think she deserves that. Um, she's put in so much work and effort. Um, well done, Jenny. All righty, kids, you're more than welcome to go with the fantastic leaders and continue doing some of those um, awesome activities. And we're going to stand and continue worshiping a couple of songs. Um, as we do that, I just want to encourage you, the Soul Care series has been something that's been really impactful. And um, as we stand up and sing songs, I implore to you that don't just sing it. Um, but really get up and really have that moment where you connect with God. That's why we come here. We could, you know, we could easily, so easily do this at home, um, listen to worship there. But when we do it as a community like this, it's, there's just something really special about that. And so as you stand now, um, just take those first few moments, connect with God. And um, I believe that He's always speaking to us. And um, so prepare your mind, your heart. And um, let's connect with Jesus. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire. Now the way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. Was another in the fire standing next to me? Was another in the waters holding back the seas? Should I ever need reminding? how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden or another died for me there is another in the fire I 
All my dead left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the water. Holding back the seas, should I ever need reminding? The power set me free. Can't brave that holds nobody. Now the power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh. oh. There is another in the fire. No, there is another in the fire. No, and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens, space between where it's then. I can feel the ground. Shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name. But the name that is Jesus He who was and still is And will be through it all Someone came in the space Between all the things unseen And this reckoning I know I will never be alone I know I know I will never be alone be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? Could you've been to me? I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. And I can see the light. The darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. Be another in the fire, standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding, could you've been to me? I'll count the joy come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. Count the joy, come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy, come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be.
For I spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. No, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. No, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, least a 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah.
totally overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. No, we chase us and down fights till I'm found least and I deny. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And all the overwhelm, never-ending, reckless love of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can sing those songs, Lord God, that your love just never stops. Lord God, I think we can spend the rest of our lives trying to think, trying to understand, trying to uh, get to grips with the depth and the width and just the, the mind-blowing, reckless love that you have for us. Even as we sing it now, Lord, I pray that, Lord God, you can just give us a glimpse of that glimpse of that love that chases down whatever we are facing, that speaks to us in the midst of a storm. Lord God, that in the midst of our pain and hurt, you are there always. When man will disappoint, you won't. You are such a, a good, good father to us. And Lord God, I pray in, as we sing these songs and as we just meditate now, Thank you for your love, Lord. That your son Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. That his hands and feet were nailed. Because you love us. That you chase down the one and you leave the 99 and you chase after us over and over and over and over again. What an amazing God that you are. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. We can go searching, Lord, but there's no one like you. And so we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Glenn. Isn't Glenn awesome? I love Glenn. I would pay for a con I would pay if you did a concert, Glenn. I would pay for that, for sure. Ugh. All righty. Do you know when you know you're getting old is like when you make a sound when you bend, eh? That's this, now this, this week I really felt, so I was walking into work, right, and, um, and I seen this girl, this, this lady, she was sitting down and I seen her and I'm like, I know you. And I'm trying to like work it out in my head and um, I realized about 10, 11 years ago, I used to look after her when she was like in year five or year six, and I'm like, now you're working? And, and then I just automatically felt even older than what I am. Um, I'm under 40, so I'm still like really uh, young, I think, but I feel old. Um, yeah, but thanks for praying for me, church. I think I definitely need those prayers. And um, particularly, there's just some weeks where you just feel um, a lot older than you than you meant to, but... Uh, and in those weeks that I feel really good, that I think I can still play 90 minutes of soccer, and in my head I think I can do it, and the body's like, dude, you got a, a, a rude awakening coming. Um, but thank you so much. It's just a blessing to be here. And um, so this is uh, the fifth message in our series, Soul Care. And I've just entitled my message slightly different from what it was. It was um, Overcoming Healing Wounds or Healing Wounds. And... Um, in the week, I was sort of processing and praying and asking God about uh, what it is that I need to sort of preach about. And I just felt this title come. It was, Ouch, That Hurts. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, because I was sort of dealing with a bit of hurt. And, um, and the one thing about God is whenever I'm sort of preparing a message, um, God always takes me through the actual thing I'm preaching on. And that can be really daunting at times. Um, it can be really challenging, but it, it's so liberating to know that he, he actually practically takes you through what you're going to preach on. 
And so that's something definitely I'm, I'm working on through today. Um, so just a quick recap as thus, thus far in our series, we've touched on identity. Um, um, Karen Siggins uh, shared with us a couple of weeks ago, four weeks ago now. Um, Dave um, spoke about repentance, um, which is fantastic message. And um, then I did overcoming sin patterns a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and then Ellis did forgiveness last week. And, and so this ties in really well with sort of this theme, this message for today. So the thinking about repentance is that we can come to, re I'm sorry, forgiveness. We, we can forgive, but that pain's still there. That hurt is still there. And so it's sort of processing what that means. Um, and we'll just be looking at some scriptures today, what sort of what the Bible says about that. Alrighty, so wounds. Hmm. I was like, what does the Bible say about wounds? But thinking about wounds, we know we, we have different types of wounds. We get sort of the flesh wound, which is an injury to the living tissue that we have. It's caused by a cut, a blow, or an impact. And it typically means that you have broken skin or like a cut skin, right? So we've all had one. Um, no, don't show that one now. That's for later. <laughs> <laughs> Giving my message away, dude. Um, uh, yeah, so that there was a cut, like a typical cut um, that you would see on, on, on your skin, and most of us would have that, right? In fact, as I was thinking about it, all of us would have a wound, a scar, um, and that's something we'll get to. But the second type of wound that we're going to be just exploring about today is the internal wound. The wounds that happen when things get said to you or when things get done to you, that it hurts, not on the outside, but really, really hurts in the inside. And how to process that and how to deal with that is something that we can definitely learn from Scripture uh, and what God teaches us how to deal with it. As we sort of have the analogy of um, our souls and as we've been exploring what that means, we Karen brought it up in her first message where she said our soul is like that travel bag that we have. So you, we all know when we're just about to head off for a holiday, we pack our bags extremely neatly. We've got everything exactly where they're meant to be. We've got hopefully clean clothes in there before we, we're heading off to our vacation. And so everything looks really good before we go. And then we sort of go on the holiday. And as time goes on, um, that bag does not look the same like it did when we, before we left, right? So it starts getting filled with a bit of dirty clothes. There might be things that get spilt inside your bag, um, things like that. So, so by the end of your holiday, that bag is just a big old mess of dirty clothes, undies, spilt stuff, whatever. And um, in some cases, like I think the other day I opened up my tackle box and it just smelled so really bad because it didn't look like that when I first got it. Right? But it, it became really smelly and dirty. And so the idea of Sometimes that's what happens to our souls, is that, that when we go through life, things happen to us that make our souls mucky and dirty and just um, in good need of a good clean. And so one of those things is wounds. All of us here would have had them. All of us would, um, would have one. So like I said, the very first, all of us here would have a wound um, right now on your body there's a sign of a wound that you'd have had. And that is, does anyone want to take a guess real quick? Ten bucks if you get it right. Come on. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, I thought about it. I was like, your belly button is actually a scar, right? I'm just going to read the definition of a belly button. Uh, your belly button, also called a navel or umbilicus, has no function after birth and is simply a scar or remnant of the umbilical cord that once connected you to your mother. The umbilical cord provided oxygen and nutrients to a baby during pregnancy and is cut off and removed at birth, leaving a scar. So as I've been processing this idea of wounds... I was sort of walking around the soccer field as my son was playing and um, having this conversation with God about wounds. And this, I felt God speak to me and say, not all wounds are bad for you. Not all wounds 
our band fees. So I thought, obviously, in the very practical thing, as, as, as I would, I'm uh, thinking of, uh, like the belly button, for instance, is a wound that was not bad for you. At one stage, you were connected to a life source, and, and, and it's when, you, when, when you were given birth to, that needed to be cut. So that wasn't a bad wound that we, we got there. Other things that I, th I was thinking about is, um, say for instance, you've got an internal problem that needs fixing, the doctor's gonna wound you. He's gonna cut you to get in there to fix the problem, the internal problem. For instance, like a cesarean section, that's not a, a bad wound. Um, where <laughs> Kay gave me the eyes. It's it's a it's a uh, it's a yeah it's a physically bad wound, but it brings life, and so um, and there could be other types of wounds that we can think of. But as I've been thinking about, it, I was like, even the very first wound mentioned in the Bible, if we think of Adam, when God put Adam to sleep, God the Bible says that God opened up his side to take out the rib in order to to make the woman right. And the God closed it up. That wasn't a bad wound. That was a good wound. It might have hurt. I th I'm, I'm sure it hurt, like a cesarean section. Did that hurt, Case? Or was it like on a scale from one to ten? Five or something? All righty. I won't go there because I'll get <laughs> sorted out later. Um, so as I've been thinking about it, I'm like, can this be true for internal wounds as well? Um, we know that when wounds don't heal, they can become infected and cause more complications like infections and cause your body just to, to, to sort of break down. A couple of weeks ago, um, my friend injured his finger. So that picture up there was actually my friend. I've got his permission to, to share this. He's put it on Facebook. Um, but it was really a small little, you can put it up there now, Michael. Thank you. Um, so that very first picture on to my right there is literally a little, little cut. Like he said, when he cut his finger, there wasn't very much, there wasn't any blood there really. Like it just, you were sort of, he had a steak knife and he put the knife down and his fingers and his hands slipped and he sort of just grazed it there. But what, actually what had happened was he severed his tendon, like in, in his little pinky. And so later that day, uh, well, actually, the next day, he went into the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, you're going to need surgery to sort of actually attach your tenon. And so he needed to have a bigger wound made to fix the problem. And so, as you see in that middle picture, he had to have his finger literally cut in a zigzag motion to sort of um, reattach his tenon. And then be, he had a cast put on, and he's got to have that for eight weeks, just from a simple little cut. And um, so he says, in his, he says in his Facebook post, he writes this, I had an unfortunate incident last week, my fault completely, but I realized that an incident, that this incident could be a good analogy for life. Our words can cause harm, cut deep, and sever relationship ties. The healing is even more painful process that is long, needs professional therapy, and in the end, there's still no guarantee for full restoration. So be mindful of the words you say to others and don't play with steak knives. So um, you can take that away now because it's pretty gruesome, Michael. Um, I actually saw it in the real life and it, it's... Ugh. But um, th those are who... And so we're going to look at a story in the Bible. Um, so if you have your Bibles with you, it's in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. And I will read. It should be up on there as well. All righty. So this is, um, it's entitled, uh, The Woman with the Issue. My one just says, With the Issue is Healed. So I'll start reading from verses 25. Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians, she went and spent all she had, and it, and it was no benefit to her but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd, and she touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of, of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was, she was healed from the affliction. 
And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude on, through, through, going, through going you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see, to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and, tre- fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Fascinating story. Like, I love that story. And it's found in all the fir- Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's found in all of them. I like the way that Mark puts it slightly different to the way that Matthew puts it. But it, it has this idea, right, of a woman that has been afflict, inflicted for 12 years. It, we don't know the exact uh, medical condition she would have had. There's a few different theories for that. But she had, a, she had a medical condition. And unfortunately, in that day and age, because you're a woman, um, you weren't treated as equal. And especially if you had an affliction like this, you were, you were shunned, you were uh, excluded, um, excluded from your family, excluded from the community. You weren't allowed in the synagogues or in the temples. And just such a painful experience for her. And not only was she excluded from all of that, she went to physicians. Like she spent everything she had, the Bible says, to try and make her physical condition right. And it just wouldn't, wouldn't get right. In fact, it got worse. So she was out of money and her body just became worse. And as I was reading that story, and I'm thinking, can we go deeper? What's actually did deeper there? Is you think, man, this, this physical condition caused so much more pain for her. So much more pain that we, we don't really see, but I can just imagine um, the thing of isolation. The fact that she was isolated would have been mortifying, would have been so devastating to her. The things that would have been said to her, the fact that she's excluded, um, she would have had deep, deep wounds in her soul. But she comes, uh, the, uh, what I love about this story is that in verses 27, in verses 27, she, the Bible says she heard, she hears about Jesus. She hears about Jesus. So this means that she must have known there was something special about this guy. And I'm thinking, man, 12 years is a long time, right? 12 years doing life on your own. Doing life in this difficult way. Doing life excluded from the society. Being shunned by your community. That had felt so much longer than just 12 years, as we know it. But yes, she hears about Jesus and she think of a crowd. Have anyone here been to a stadium, like a full stadium, right? Back in South Africa, when we used to go watch the rugby or the soccer, um, the crowds just gathered so much. And there was, at the end of the game, there was always just this feeling of like trying to rush out. And sometimes there was stampedes and whatever the case may be, unfortunate circumstances. So there was this panic. And I just think, like in this situation where Jesus was now, he has this woman that has a physical affliction, but undoubtedly she has internal wounds that need healing. And she comes to the end of herself. I mean, she's got no money anymore. She can't offer Jesus anything. But she purposes in her heart that she needs to fight through the crowd and get to Jesus. And she says to herself, all I need to do is touch the hem of his garment. That's all I need. I just need to get into his presence to touch the hem of his garment. And so she does. And, and we see that how amazing the story is that she just touches the hem of his garment and her body is made well. And then at the end there, when Jesus finally speaks to her and he calls a daughter, what an affectionate name, what a compassionate name to call her. He calls a daughter and he says to her, he says to her in verses 34, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Jesus, as a good, good father, calls this woman who had been so deeply wounded, he calls a daughter. This term, made you well, is more properly defined as made you whole. 
that when he said, you have been made well, and I just think, what a beautiful picture. Because now she's been physically made well in her body, but that just means she can go on that uh, journey of, uh, of being made whole. Being made whole. And what a beautiful thing it is to think that that's what Jesus gives us. As we know, wounds need time to heal. Sometimes they heal on their own. Sometimes we need a Band-Aid. Sometimes we need medical help. It's the same with our souls. When we get wounded, we can, we can forgive that person or whatever's happened to us. But this, our wounds, they heal. They do heal. Right. And in this lady's circumstance, what, G, what the Scripture is teaching us here, that every one of us here, like you have that physical wound or, 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 or remembrance as what it's the sky is, we will have internal wounds that we all need to process. Now, some of them are not bad for you. Some of them are good for you. And I'm thinking about this lady. Her physical affliction, her physical wound, the internal wounds, when she was, had spent everything that she had when she went to go uh, uh, get medical um, professionals to help her out, in fact, that made her worse. She was bankrupt. She was broken. She was desperate. And this brought her to Jesus. This brought her to Jesus. And she purposed in her heart that she's going to get to Jesus. In the midst of a society, would have looked at her in that crowd and think, they would have known her. She's been there for 12 years. They'd have known who she is. She's been trying to get her life sorted out, but it's not working. So they would have known her. And I can just imagine, do you know when we do that thing, like when someone you don't like, ugh, that thing we do, that would have been done to her so many times. And she would have felt broken and hurt. But what I love about her, she, she perseveres through that, and she touches the hem of his garment. Right, and she's healed, and we see that beautiful uh, interaction with, Je with, with Jesus. And so, too, with our lives, when we know that we uh, at times get hurt inside, what have we done about it? Have we gone to try and get it fixed? Sometimes, like uh, I said earlier, we might need professional help. We might need time. But when last have you gone to Jesus for that? When last have you gone to Jesus and asked, Lord, I'm hurting, I'm wounded. Can you heal me? Guys, all you need to do is be in his presence. Jesus was not even looking at her. And this is what blew my mind is that she came into his presence, touched him without him even knowing it. I'm sure he did. But he, she gets healed. And I'm thinking, man, Lord, all we need to do is get into your presence. And that rest restoration in our souls can start working out. As I said earlier, I've been processing, processing a bit of hurt myself. And felt a little bit of wounds. And as I've been thinking about it and praying about it, I was like, you know, we can get into that depressive state or that uh, self wallowing state where we feel, ah, oh, yeah, life is uh, whatever. And you just keep on going. And I got to the stage where I said, Lord, I just want to be in your presence. And immediately I felt the shift in my spirit, which was just lifted off my shoulders. And the most amazing thing happened for me is as I was thinking about that, God's word was such a beautiful reminder that any wound I'll ever have pales in comparison to the wounds that Jesus endured for me. In Isaiah 53 verses 5 it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, we are healed. And I just thought, Lord, oh, man, any wound I have pales in comparison to what you have done on the cross for us. 1 Peter 2 verses 4, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we may die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. And we see it here with this lady. She wasn't just physically healed. She was made whole. She was healed. Now that does not mean we will not have scars. Or we will forget. 
but we will be healed. As I said earlier, not all wounds are bad. I spoke of the physical, but this is also true of the uh, internal wounds that we get. We know that Jesus was physically wounded for us. But God endured wounds in the remarkable sacrifice of watching his son die for us. Jesus endured the physical wounds in his hands and feet and being whipped and lashed and, 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 and the cross hanging on the cross and thorns being stuck into his head. He endured the physical pain and the physical wounds. But God the Father endured the internal wound of watching his son die for us. And that just, I know we know it, but when I thought of it from the perspective of my own pain and my own hurts, and I just thought, Lord, hmm, how awesome are you? Like the woman that touched the edge of his garment, I know that all we need is to be made whole. I know that doesn't mean we're not going to have scars. Lord, Jesus has scars. We know that. From the holes that he had in his hand, when the disciples had asked, how do we know if it's you? He showed them his hands. We know that you have a wound in your side, and you did that all for us. This has been an interesting journey for me this last couple of, maybe two or three months, just thinking about some of these things. The, 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 the family sin patterns, forgiveness, and healing wounds. God has built us in such a way that we can be wounded and we can heal. And that's a beautiful thing when I thought, yeah, I feel wounded right now but I know that you heal me. I know that you heal me. And again, when I read those words, but he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, we are healed. And that's when I realized that we can chase, we can spend all our money, we can go and visit any uh, uh, um, medical professional we want, but that true healing really does come from Jesus. Now, by no means am I diminishing the pain and hurt that you may be suffering. And yes, it, by all means, we need counseling, we need therapy, we need, we need people around us. But I, what I, when I look at Jesus and his compassion here, there's nothing really we need more. We do need people around us. And as, as I was saying, I was processing a bit of hurt in this week, and I had a really good friend just pray for me. And it's, I've been prayed for many times, but there's something special about when you're hurting and someone prays for you. You can pray for yourself, but there's something so, so profound about when we gather in a place like this, and you may be hurting here now. I know there's people hurting in our congregation. And we can't run away from Jesus. In fact, like this lady did, when we get to the end of ourselves, our own resources, what the world can offer us, we need to persevere through the crowd. And for me, the crowd was the, the noises in my head, the things that was trying to keep me away from Jesus and try to work everything out in my own way. And at the end, I, was just, I just said, Lord, it's in your hands. I just want to be in your presence. And that brings healing. So I just want you to close your eyes now, if you will. <sighs> and think about some of those um, those hurts that you may have, those internal wounds that you may have. You might have not have thought about it for a long time. You might not have processed it in a long time. But I want to encourage you, like this lady did, to persevere. Persevere through all the noises in your head. Of you through all the, 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 the feelings that are keeping you away from Jesus. And just picture him there. That all we need is the touch of his garment. All we need is to be in his presence and he brings restoration because that, that's who he is. That's who he is. If there's anyone here today that is feeling that way, 
that the, one he, the healing power of Jesus, I'm going to pray for you now. It's not my words that heal, but like Jesus says to the woman, your faith in him, the faith, the faith to push through, the faith to declare that he's the healer, the faith, this faith is what will bring you wholeness. If that is you this morning, I pray that you would just speak to God in that. Not all wounds are bad for you. Yes, they might hurt. They might make you say a few words like ouch and, and leave a scar. But what is the lesson that God is teaching you in this moment? This woman's of affliction that she experienced for 12 years brought her to Jesus. It's what brought her to Jesus. Is your hurt and your pain something that can bring you into a deeper relationship with Jesus? This affliction that was revealed to her reveals the compassion of Jesus. That when the world around you excludes you, He includes you. When the people around you shun you, He heals you. When the people around you break you down, He's the one that restores your soul. What are your wounds? What can God teach you about those wounds right now? Lord God, I thank you so much for each person represented here today. Lord God, there's nothing that I can say that you don't know about them. But I thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of healing. That, Lord God, that there are things in our lives, each one of us here would have experienced deep, painful hurt. That at some point would have brought us to our knees. And, Lord God, I know that we would have cried out. Many, many tears. But I pray for each person here now. Lord God, as you healed that woman thousands of years ago, you are still healing people today, Lord God. You are still healing me today. And so I thank you, Lord God, that the world can't bring me that. Only you can. So I thank you for each person here. Thank you, Lord God, that in our physical bodies we have reminders. We have scars that remind us that we were born into this world. That there was a time in our lives that we were connected to a, a life source that fed us, that gave us what we needed. Lord God, right now in our souls, I pray that there are wounds there that remind us that we need you, that you are our source. Like an umbilical cord connects a baby to a mother, I pray that this relationship with you is our umbilical cord. This word that you have given us is our umbilical cord to you, that you may heal our souls, Lord God, that, yes, we will go through lives enduring pain and hurt and wounds, but in your in your goodness and your grace and your mercy, your compassion. You call us sons and daughters. And like you said to that woman, your faith has healed you. You have made us whole, Lord. Lord God, I thank you for each person. Bless them and keep them, Lord. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. And I pray right now, I truly pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would heal their hearts. Heal their hearts like only you can. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thousand times I've failed, seen your mercy remain. You should have stumbled again, so now I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all hell 
us fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. You will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. You will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all Faith's never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out. Lord, my soul cries out. my heart and my soul lord i give you control consume me from the inside out lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out everlasting. Your Just going to read Psalms 23 to us and then bless you on your way. 
Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He gives me, he, he guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord God, I thank you for those beautiful words. I thank you for the reminder that you refresh our souls. That Lord God, you are such a good shepherd that you guide us every step of the way. Thank you for your word today. That reminds us, Lord God, that we need to persevere to get to you. But once we're in your presence, Lord God, such awesome things happen. So I thank you for each person here today. Lord God, bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, church. Um, just a heads up, I'm going to be leaving straight away because I've got a, my dad's birthday party. Um, but it's such a joy to, to be here. Uh, there's some muffins and cake stuff over there that's been bought please stay for a cup of coffee if you can and um, thank you as always and god bless thank you